Hello everyone, welcome to English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur. In this video, I am going to discuss the important elements, detailed explanation and poetic devices used in the poem Childhood by Marcus Nathan from class 11th English textbook Hornbill. So let's get started. The poem Childhood focuses on the theme of the loss of innocence. The poet Marcus Nathan wonders when and where he lost his childhood. He ponders over this question and highlights the loss of innocence and faith in the quest of growing up. Adolescence is a puzzling time when a child is unable to settle with the physical, psychological and other changes in his personality. He becomes a young adult. He neither wants to call himself a child nor he is completely an adult. He wonders whether it is the age or the stage when the young, unsolid mind learns to see through the adult's hypocrisy and identifies his own distinctiveness. He finally finds his answer that he lost his childhood to some forgotten place and that his childhood has become a memory. Structure of the Poem Childhood by Marcus Dayton contains four stanzas. The first three stanzas have six lines in each, while the last one has only four lines. The structure of the poem is suggestive of the subject matter of the poem. It is a subjective poem. Thus, at the beginning of each stanza, poet constantly asks himself, where did my childhood go? He is confused about when he ceased to be a child. Next is the form. There is a regularity in the rhyme scheme in the first and last stanza. In the first stanza, the word 11 in the second line rhymes with the word heaven in the next line. Likewise, geography rhymes with B. In the last stanza, the scheme is different. Go in the first line rhymes with no in the last line. Place and face in the second and third lines respectively rhyme together. The poem follows a subjective perspective of telling things. It is a lyric. Please note that when the poet talks about the things concerning childhood, the lines become longer. When he comes into reality, the lines shorten. The poet becomes rejuvenated when he thinks about the fascinating things of his childhood. For the monotony of mature life, the poet becomes sad. He falls short of words. Next, we have sound and meter. Childhood is an iambic meter. The metrical scheme of the poem suggests two aspects of the poem. Firstly, it points out the poet's satisfaction when he talks about his childhood in the poem. Secondly, it is for emphasizing the words in each line. There is not a single sound scheme that dominates the poem. There are certain hypermetrical and trochaic variations in the poem. Next, we have rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme used in the poem is A, B, B, C, C, D. Have you ever wondered where we have lost our childhood? Marcus Nathan, the poet has the same question. He believes that he has lost the innocence and purity of his childhood to some unknown and unforgotten place. Through his poem, Childhood, the readers are confronted with the question as to when and where have we lost our childhood. The answers lead to self-discovery. Let's read the poem first and try to understand the poem one stanza at a time. Childhood by Marcus Nathan When did my childhood go? Was it the day I ceased to be eleven? Was it the time I realized that hell and heaven could not be found in geography and therefore could not be. Was that the day? Poetic devices play very important role in any poem. In first stanza, we have refrain, assonance, antithesis and alliteration which I have highlighted in different colors and I will be explaining them in detail after the explanation of the poem. The poet begins the poem by putting forth a question to himself about his childhood being lost. He wonders when he lost his childhood and at what point. He reflects that perhaps it was the day when he crossed the age of 11. Maybe 
it was at the stage when he realized the concepts of hell and heaven about which he had been taught since his childhood did not exist in reality geography textbooks did not give the location of any such places and did not provide him with any information about the existence of such places the poet also feels that he might have lost his childhood at the point where he understood that heaven and hell cannot be found in geography books the poet realizes that he might have lost his childhood when he gained education education has made the poet look at the world differently with more reason and logic the poet feels that he probably lost his childhood when he acquired rational thinking towards his surroundings the poet uses the line and therefore could not be for emphasizing that he could not freely roam in his imaginary world like before time has changed he is not a child anymore the use of refrain in the last line highlights the poet's transition into adulthood when did my childhood go was it the time i realized that adults were not all they seemed to be they talked of love and preached of love but did not act so lovingly was that the day in the second stanza the poet repeats the same question about when he lost his childhood the poet reflects that maybe the loss of childhood occurred when he was able to see through the hypocrisy of the adults these people follow double standards preaching one thing and following another they are hypocrites the poet realized that everyone was pretentious and their actions do not coordinate with their words the adults talk and preach of love but their actions do not follow through they told the poet to be loving and caring however they themselves were argumentative violent and discourteous their behavior was far from the love they preached about and advocated so reverently to the child the poet feels that he probably lost his childhood when he started seeing the world with a new perception that adults are hypocrites and are not how they seem to be when did my childhood go was it when i found my mind was really mine to use whichever way i choose producing thoughts that were not those of other people but my own and mine alone was that that day in the third stanza the poet deliberates on the same question about when he lost his childhood he asked himself about the possibilities he wonders about the day when he understood that his mind was his own and he could use it the way he wanted he realized that he could produce his own thoughts which were not dictated by anyone he gained a sense of individuality which set him free from the preconceived opinions of others his own opinions and experiences shape his thoughts now and he realized that this might have been the time when he lost his childhood innocence stanza 4 where did my childhood go it went to some forgotten place that is hidden in an infant's face that's all i know the poet ponders upon the questions which many might have faced in their lives ultimately the poet realizes that his childhood has left him forever and might never return to him it is merely a memory for him now now in the final stanza the poet changes his question from wondering at what point in time did he lose his childhood to where it went instead the last three lines may be interpreted in two ways the poet claims that his childhood is nothing more than a long lost memory and cannot be retrieved as now he is grown up he recalls his infancy and believes that his true childhood resides there in that infant's face and that in a sense will not resurface in his lifetime he cherishes his innocence which had now vanished and could only be seen in an infant's face in the concluding lines the poet does not come to a clear decision as to where he lost his childhood however he feels that pure innocence is lost amidst growing up and building one's personality the poet agrees that as you age you lose your innocence as you prepare yourself to face the harsh world outside in this stanza the poet becomes practical he accepts that he is an adult now 
and can no longer think like a child what is gone is gone forever he realized that he may be an adult but the essence of childhood is always present in the heart of a child and the happy face of an infant purity glittering in its full luster there's no reason to be sad those innocent faces brimming with the hope of a new day are always there to cheer him up that's all he knows in this poem the poet beautifully brings out a concept which you all would come across in your lives as time passes life becomes more practical and more complex the childhood is always considered the best stage and filled with innocence this poem talks about lost childhood and reaching adulthood in life during the childhood days all are in a hurry to grow up as it feels you get more freedom but once you reach adulthood you feel like going back to those stress free days of pure bliss let's discuss the stages of growing up first three stanzas in the poem describes the first step to maturity or loss of childhood as when one is able to think logically and rationally forming one's own opinion and not getting influenced by others the poem also hints at the hypocrisy prevalent in our society the first stanza talks about rationalism the poet realizes that he might have lost his childhood when he ceased to be 11 and gained a rational outlook when he discovered that hell and heaven do not exist and are not found in geography stanza 2 deals with hypocrisy the poet realizes that adults are not what they seemed to be and they are hypocrites they talk and preach of love but their actions do not say so the third stanza deals with individuality the poet realized that he can use his own mind and can produce his own thoughts he discovered a sense of individuality in himself which set him free from the preconceived opinions of others poetic devices are essential tools that poet uses to create rhythm to enhance a poem's meaning or to intensify a mood or feeling there are quite a number of poetic devices used in the poem let's discuss them one at a time the first and the foremost literary device used in the poem is refrain and what is refrain it is a poetic device that uses repetition to place emphasis on a set of words or an idea within a poem the repetition of the lines usually occurs at the end or the beginning of the poem and gives the poem its particular rhythm the refrain often carries the central message of the poem the two lines which do so in this poem are where did my childhood go was that that day the first refrain which is a question is the central theme of the poem as to when did the poet lose his childhood while the second refrain ends with an exclamation which brings out the poet's realization next we have personification it is the attribution of human characteristics to non-human things and animals in the poem the poet personifies childhood he thinks that it has left and gone somewhere else in this poem childhood is personified in the line it went to some forgotten place next we have inversion it is a term used to refer to the inverting of the normal word order in a sentence or a phrase in the poem poet has reversed subject verb order in the line to use whichever way i choose instead of writing i choose whichever way or i choose the way i want to use poet has reversed the subject verb order for a poetic effect next we have enjambment it is a literary device in which a line of poetry carries its idea or thought over to the next line without a grammatical pause it is a continuation of a sentence without a pause beyond the end of a line couplet or stanza let's check out the examples was it the time i realized that adults were not all they seemed to be second line of the second stanza producing thoughts that were not those of other people but my own and mine alone fourth line of the third stanza as you can see the meaning runs over from one poetic line to the next without terminal punctuation or pause the poet has used 
anaphora in the poem it is a poetic technique in which words repeat at the beginning of successive clauses phrases or sentences let's look at the examples from the poem was it the day i ceased to be 11 was it the time i realized here you can see the repetition of the words was it in the two consecutive lines so it is an example of anaphora another example of anaphora in the poem is that is hidden in an infant's face that's all i know and now you know why it is anaphora as you can see the word that is repeated in two successive lines there are rhetorical questions in the poem the poet incorporates them many times for example when did my childhood go where did my childhood go next we have rhyme scheme the poet does not follow any particular rhyme scheme it is an example of free verse but in the first stanza alone it has rhyme scheme a b b c c d and in the fourth stanza the rhyme scheme is a b b a next we have antithesis it is a rhetorical device in which two opposite ideas are put together in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect an example of antithesis from the poem is hell and heaven where two opposite ideas are put together in the sentence next we have alliteration the repetition of usually same consonant sounds or letters at the beginning of a neighboring or closely connected words is known as alliteration let's check out the examples given in the poem in the line my mind consonant sound m is repeated repetition of the consonant sound b is also noticed in the line to use whichever way and sound of d is quite prominent in the lines producing thoughts that were and was that the day next poetic device used is assonance assonance is the repetition of the same or similar vowel sounds within words phrases or sentences the word is derived from the latin phrase assonere meaning to answer with the same sound for example in line 2 and 3 in stanza 1 was it the day i ceased to be 11 was it the time i realized that hell and heaven vowel sound e is repeated in stanza 3 producing thoughts that were not those of other people but my own and mine alone o sound is very prominent so these are the examples of assonance in the poem with this we come to the end of this lecture don't forget to give your valuable feedback thank you so much for watching like share and subscribe english tutorials by poonam thakur